evening, everyone, both online and offline here. Uh, as Lisa mentioned, my name is Paul Gentile. I've taught a number of classes here dealing with photographs. And today we're going to talk about a piece of software that's relatively new, three or four years, and um, was authored and marketed as a Google product um, called Google Photos. Google Photos has become the choice of many people that want to organize their photos. There's many reasons for using Google Photo. Um, the reason I use it primarily is to store all of my photos for safekeeping on the cloud. Another reason I use Google Photos is to share. It's one of the easiest tools to share the photos once they're, uh, once they're loaded into the application. So let's talk about the cloud first. Um, I think some of you may look at the cloud and try, try to gain an understanding, if you will, of what really is. People talk about it every day, it's part of our language, but what really is the cloud? The cloud is nothing more than a group of servers, and a server is a specialized computer that has a lot of storage area, able to share information across telephone, fiber optic networks, communicate with different computers, and keep everything safe using usually military encryption. So when we say we're going to take our photos and we're going to uh, we're going to move them to the cloud. That means we're going to take our photos from our small smartphones, our photos from our hard drives, uh, our photos from our flash drives, and let Google move them onto these servers so that you and anyone you deem uh, can have access accessibility to those photos and share those photos. Um, it's, uh, it's very important that um, you recognize that once they're in the cloud, then they're the one of the safest places they can be out of your home. Now, when I say that, I want you to think about Florida a month or so ago and what happened down there. And think of all of those people that had photos in their garages, basements, attics, whatever. And what happened to those photos? It's a proven statistic by the insurance companies that if you have a if you're having a fire or a tragedy in your home, physical tragedy, one of the first things people grab are their photos. Try to find their photos because in many cases they're priceless. They're priceless and can't be replaced. And remember, one of the most important reasons for moving your photos to the cloud is to ensure, ensure their safety. I'm not saying throw all your photos away once you move them to the cloud. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm suggesting is most people should think very seriously of putting them on the cloud to guarantee their safety. And once they're on their cloud, you can see them, as I said, and you can share them. So Google Photos was introduced in 2015. Uh, and you, know, you don't have to really take uh, copacetic notes because most of this is going to be sent to you if you ask for, if you ask for it from Lisa. Uh, in the past, what people usually did is they took their photos and they moved them to their hard drive uh, by using their camera. Uh, with a link to the computer, they would move their photos from the camera to the hard drive, and your photos would sit on the hard drive. But fortunately, once you're on the hard drive, uh, you can see them probably. Uh, but maybe other people you wanted to see them couldn't share them. And even more importantly, mechanical hard drives in a computer are prone to failure. It's a proven fact that Every two or three years, a good percentage of hard drives fail. And when your hard drive fails and your pictures are not backed up, you can say goodbye to that data. Some of it, or many, most of it can't be, is irretrievable. So you have to remember that 
getting the pictures and your important information off your hard drive or duplicating it on your hard drive and the cloud is probably one of the safest ways to go. Any questions so far? Well, not really. Uh, in order to use Google Photos, you do need a Google account. By having a Google account doesn't mean that you need to use the Google email. However, by having a Google account, Google has over 400 products that you can use for the most part free. Now, because when you open up Google Chrome and you look at the browser, the internet browser, you can also look at the basic products that it offers and it'll show you Google Photos. But you have to launch Google Photos and you have to set it up. Uh, and then once you launch it and you execute the software, what it will do is search your hard drives. And if you, uh, let me get to that, and then it'll search your hard drives and load your photos automatically. What Google does, Google gives you unlimited storage uh, capability for your pictures, as long as your pictures are not above 12 megapixels. And most cameras take a picture at on the average two megapixels or two million uh, pixels. Um, only professional photographers would get up into the over 10 megapixel pictures or raw images, but anyway, the average person that takes a digital picture uh, should have ample room to store uh, their pictures on the Google Cloud for free. I have 147,000 pictures in my library, my Google Photos library, and I'm using about one third of the storage area. And you can always buy more storage and it's relatively inexpensive. But the important thing, once you establish a Google account and you go to Google Photos and launch it, it'll take you through a question and answer asking if you want to save uh, in high resolution format or regular resolution format. Most people choose the, the non-high resolution because quite honestly, when you look at Google Photos as an end product, you can't really tell the difference between high resolution and regular. So I would for a person would should probably take all the defaults and then Google Photo will start loading the pictures you have on your on your computer and your on your computer. Now, what about all the pictures that I have on my cell phone? Um, that's another source of many pictures. And for some people, they don't have pictures on their hard drive. All the pictures are on their smartphone. Because when we take a picture now, it's primarily with our smartphone. So Google Photos has an app. And what I mean by an app, people ask what that is. An app means application. It's a piece of software. That's all it is. It's a piece of software. You can actually, through Google Play Store or the Apple Store, and I might add Google Photos can run on Apples, Macs, or PCs. Um, you would, down, you would load the Apple Photos app on your phone. Once you load it on your phone and launch the software, it would go through the same, this is assuming you have a Google account, it would go, th go through the same question and answer exercise and load the photos into the cloud automatically from your smartphone. Now, if you went, if you loaded the uh, desktop version of Google Photos on your PC or your Mac, it would load those pictures into your a cloud account. In your cloud account for your photos, the credentials are your, your Google password and username credentials. Okay? So there's really only rep one repository created 
or your Google account and Google Photos. When you go over here to your phone and you load the, the Google app on your phone and you launch the Google app, naturally you're, it's gonna ask you for your, for your Google username and password. So it knows what repository to put the pictures in from your phone. So when you're done, you have one repository with the credential of your Google username and password containing all the pictures from your smartphone and your PC. Yeah. Just wondering. I just get a bill in on my uh, email every month. Uh, 99 cents for your iPhone. I'm guessing that was from Apple. Um, I yeah. don't remember setting it up, but I'm just happy it's happening. So I didn't question it. So that is our Google and Apple. You're saying those are one in the same thing that you're going to set up? Is no. Go one going through the other? No. Two Remember, separate. Google and Apple are two separate manufacturers, two separate companies, two separate products. The only thing I wanted to say is that Google Photos can run on a, a Microsoft or a PC computer. It can also run on an Apple computer. So it can do both, whereas Apple can't. Right. Apple has, Apple can't run on the PC. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So once you load your pictures onto Google Photo, the beauty of Google Photo is that it can contain things other than pictures. You can load your videos on Google Photo. And when you tell Google Photo to look in your PC or look in your phone, it automatically detects photos, it detects videos, and it loads it all into the Google Photos cloud system. Yeah. That's a good question. There could be some duplication if you're bringing photos in from a Apple device. There could be some duplication, but there's software out there where you can actually look for duplicate pictures and delete them. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there could be some, but probably most people may have some duplication, but not much. Any questions? And right, and someone said to me, "Oh no, don't worry, that goes to the cloud." And so, like, yes, we were. My my philosophy is this: never duplicate your photo, never delete your photos, never delete your photos, uh, and that includes your hard copy paper photos. Never delete them. Uh, sometime, maybe not you, but someone in the next generation may want those photos. The best thing you can do is once you digitize your photos, um, you would store them in the proper storage, acid-free containers in a uh, controlled environment, and you would keep your photos forever or for the next generation. But don't destroy your photos. Yep. I see these little signs and I never use library. That automatically puts them in the cloud library. Google. I'd have to see what you're what you're you know what you mean. I'd have to see it. Uh but no, when you talk about the Google Cloud, it'll always it'll always enumerate it as the Google Cloud. Yeah. Uh just like if you uh, if you're a big Word user and you word, use a lot of Word documents or author a lot of Word documents, remember I mentioned those four or 500 plus applications that Google offers for free, mostly for free. Uh, you could actually take Word and not use Word anymore, which you pay for, and you could use Google Docs, which does the same thing as Word for the average user and not pay a thing. But when you get into and look at the Google products, there's hundreds of products that are for free. 
and uh, people don't realize it, but that's why I'm such a keen Google user because of its interchangeability. Now let's talk about those pictures being on the cloud. Once those pictures are on the cloud now, you can see them on your computer. You can see them on your phone. Uh, you can go to another computer anywhere in the world. And as long as you have internet access, you can see those photos. You can share those photos uh, with anyone uh, that you deem appropriate. You set the credentials. Uh, you can do the same thing with documents, with spreadsheets, you can load them on the cloud and share them. And the people you share them with do not have to be Google users. Um, what, the, what Google does is when you share a photo, if you will, or a document with someone else, it gives them the, the linkage, if you will, or the address of that document so that they can go in and, and you can specify, they can just look at it, they can edit it, they can comment it, they can maintain it, et cetera. You set the rights. So the important thing is it's safe and it's shareable. And as I said, Google gives you uh, 16 megabytes, or I'm sorry, 30 megabytes, 30 gigabytes, I'm sorry, 30 gigabytes for uh, your storage. No, let me take that back. 15 gigabytes for storage of your photos. Each photo can be up to 16 megabytes in size, which is, and think of me, 147,000 photos. I'm only using a third of the cloud storage. Yeah, yeah. Um, once they're on the cloud, you not only can share them as individual or groups of prints, but you can actually uh, make movies, you can make slideshows, you can make books, uh, picture books, share them with your group. My wife, every Christmas, she's on that computer in early in December, looking at all the best pictures for the previous year. And what she does, she gathers together the best pictures for that year. She puts them into a individual books for each of the grandchildren. And she calls it this year. And it's as easy as making it. It would take you, it can take you, if you, let's say you want to take, 30 pictures and put it in that album. It can actually take you 10 minutes or less to set up that book and send it to whoever you want to send it to. Now, let's talk about other functions of the cloud, of Google Photos. Google Photos, I should say Google, has developed through its brain power some of the most sophisticated artificial intelligence software in the world. When I was in Ireland a couple of years ago, I went to check out and uh, uh, I didn't have to go through the regular checkout process for leaving the country. All I did is walk up to a terminal, press a button and the screen uh, showed the image of my, or took the image of my face. And that face went into the artificial intelligence software. And because of facial risk, facial recognition, I was issued my exit visa and I could leave Ireland. That's a sophisticated uh, face detection um, software has become. And we're getting very close to having that at all the airports where your face is detected or your eyes are detected or et cetera for uh, security purposes. But Google in developing this said one of the most interesting places that could put it is in the search function under Google Photos. So think of this, think of the power of this. When you load your photos, not you, but when Google loads your photos into its cloud database, the first thing it does is it goes through every face that's in your pictures, every face. And it, when you open the product for the first time, it'll show you carcasses of every face. So let's take my system. I load 147,000 images into Google Photo. Next thing I see is a thousand caricatures, colored faces, circles showing them under faces uh, found. All I have to do is find the first face or look at the first face. 
and edit it. And then I'll say, what name do you want to give to this face? And I give Paul Gentile. What Google does in this software, it'll actually go through the database again. And everywhere it finds my face and associates it with Paul Gentile. So I could go into my photos, 147 photo, photos, and I could tell Google Photo, find Paul Gentile. It'll pull up 10,000 pictures of Paul Gentile in less than a minute and show it on the screen. But the important thing is the face rec or the, the recognition software is sophisticated now that it actually can find not only faces, but can find objects. You can say, I did a search the other day, find me all the pictures with leaves in them. Boom. Find me all the pictures with Paul Gentile and Debbie Gentile. Boom. Find all the pictures with my nephew, Brian. Boom. Uh, so you can see how easy it is to share and build books and booklets and cards uh, using this search technology. It's incredible. It really is incredible. I did a search the other day. I said, find all, find red leaves. Went through 147,000 pictures in under a minute and showed me three pictures with red leaves. Think of the power of that when you're trying to build uh, memory books or save your pictures or find different things. Now, yeah. No, 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 no. And what it does is it loads or copies the picture from your phone or your computer into the cloud. It doesn't, it leaves them in place. It doesn't disturb anything else. Oh, you do it both places. Yeah, you do it both. Yeah, yeah because it, Google is going to ask you, where do you want me? Where do you want my pictures? Where do I get the pictures? You're going to get them from your phone and you're going to get them from your laptop. So you need the product on both or desktop. Oh, where are your pictures? All on the phone? No, that's the only two places you're going to load them from then. You would load the app on both devices and load. Yeah, what it does is that it, once it loads your face, the names are unique. You have to give a name to a face. But trees and things like that, you, it, it automatically detects trees or other objects. Uh, now, um, when you're when you're looking at Google Photos, uh, it seems it seems pretty simple what I just talked about in that. You load the app on your phone or your or your computer, and you tell it to scan your computer and find any pictures. That's uh, all well and good and fairly easy to do. However, let's talk about the other half of the equation. What about all the pictures that you have in shoeboxes and uh, uh, sitting in the attic in boxes? Uh, et cetera. What about those photos? Um, before I move on to that, I want to mention one other thing that's very important. Once you load your, your photos into Google Photo, what it does is every time you take a picture with your smartphone or add another picture to your PC, it automatically knows you did that and loads it into the cloud. So you, know, you never have to reload. And I'm like, you take a picture today, loads it in the cloud. Yeah. Yep. In your face. So when I go on my desk in the search bar, I put Google. Now, are you a Chrome user? Yeah. You are. Well, on the top of your browser, uh, it'll, it'll have your search box. Yeah. And then way over to the right, there's this little, we call it the waffle. It's a, it's like eight dots. Oh, yeah. If you click on that waffle, it'll show you all the Google products. 
One will be Google Photos. And then you can go from there. Yeah. So every time I take a picture, I went to Maine last week and took 200 pictures. Uh, my cousin was supposed to go with me. He couldn't. Uh, I took As I took pictures, they loaded to the cloud instantaneously that day when I got back to the hotel. I just sent them a, I sent them those pictures automatically. You never have to worry about security because they're stored in the cloud. They're encrypted. Google has one of the best encrypted technologies in the business. Things are safe on the Google servers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what you do when you sign into Google, you give it that information initially. And you don't have to give it again. It remembers it. Yep. Photos and you said never delete photos. So if you don't delete them, how do you clear them? Um, that's a good question. Uh, assuming that you've loaded them out to the cloud, uh, that's the first step you want to take to get them out there and make sure they're out there. Um, but then um, you can you can offload them uh, off your phone uh, onto a hard disk or a flash drive to save them. Um, but you would have to have a lot of a lot of pictures out there on your phone to run out of storage because uh, you know there's I have probably five thousand pictures on my phone and you know uh, yeah. But when you, if you did run out of storage on your phone, first of all, you want to make sure they're backed up on the cloud. Secondly, there's there's ways that you can uh, back them up to a external hard drive. If you would go into your vendor and they could help you with that, you know, it's a, it's a whole different operation. But the main thing is to get your pictures out on the cloud now, so they don't deteriorate. They, they don't. They don't. If you take your phone, think of this: take your phone, drops in a mud puddle. In some cases, there goes your photos. Well, for this lady, the only place she has her photos is on her phone. Gone. Gone. Yep, gone. Yeah, I've seen, when I talk about backing up pictures or getting them to the cloud, I've seen, I've been in this field 40 years. I've seen grown men cry because of situations where they haven't had things backed up and they've lost them. All, of, all you need is a little blip power surge in your computer, and you can say goodbye to that hard drive. Yep. Um, so you want to get you want to get your information, your valuable information, not only your photos, out to the cloud as soon as you can. Latest in terms of high speed, that going to impact things as we go. The only thing that's going to impact is the speed, <clears throat> the speed. It, yeah, it's really a, just a faster network. You know, it's fa it's faster network so that information goes and comes to you quicker. No, 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 no. Um, okay, now let's talk about the other half of the equation. In some cases, the most important half of the equation, and that is, you're sitting there and you're thinking, uh, gee, I have a lot of pictures up in the attic of well, my family. My sister has a lot of pictures that she's always that she wants to give me. Uh, the family has a lot of pictures that they want to give me. Am, am I going to load those into Google Photo? What am I going to do? Here's where you have to think and do some planning. Um, the, the reason that Google Photo has such powerful search capability, especially in the case of you can search by location, the picture was taken, you can search by date, you can search by those objects that I talked about, and by face, right? Pretty powerful. For a lot of people, that's all they need. That's all they'll ever use. However, when you take that picture on your digital camera, uh, the date, the type of camera, the exposure of the camera, the characteristics of the camera, the location of the picture is all 
automatically behind the scenes captured within that digital picture, could, and it's called metadata, very important, metadata, metadata. Now, you never see this as the average user. It's a little box. It's in part of that digital picture. Even when you look at it on the screen, unless you have the proper software, you'll never see this metadata. But that metadata contains the characteristics of your picture. So when Google loads the digital pictures into its databases, it uses the metadata to search the picture. Because it has the, the geo coordinates from your digital camera into the picture, it loads it into the cloud. And when you say find all pictures taken in Osterville, it'll go to that geo code and find them. That's how it finds them. Now, let's talk, as I said, the other half of the equation, which is very important to many people, and that's your historic pictures, your archive pictures, your pictures that go back to the 40s, the 50s, the 30s. Uh, they weren't taken by a digital camera. So they have no metadata, no metadata. What people did in those days, and my mother was one of the great chronicles of this, she used to write on the back of pictures or on the bottom of pictures. You know, Aunt Lucy at the State Park, 1934. She was a faithful documenter of information on the thousand historic pictures I have. Thank God she could do this because I can't remember. I wasn't even born in 1934, and I probably couldn't remember the people anyway from that long ago. However, most people didn't do that. So what do you do? How do you search for those pictures? Is it important for you to load those pictures? So remember early in the conversation, I said that I used Google Photos for two primary purposes. One is to back it up onto the cloud to secure it, my pictures. And number two was to uh, share those pictures. But I have over over a thousand historic pictures going back to the 1910s that I have digitized over the years. And I also want to save. Now, if I put the, yeah. Digitized, meaning? Scanned, it, either I scanned or I had someone else scanned, put into a digital format and they're ready to store somewhere. Scan on a, what, can you take the screenshot? No, you can you you actually have scanner apps that can load on your phone that you can scan pictures using your phone. You can buy a regular dedicated scanner for under two hundred dollars, a flatbed scanner. Yep, yep. And you can take all of those historic pictures and you can load those into, for instance, Google uh, Cloud. Now, for many people, those, those pictures are the most important. And for me, they were most important because they're obviously irreplaceable pictures of my parents, my grandparents, et cetera. What do you do with those? Well, first of all, you have to think about getting them into a digital format. Either have someone else scan them, and there are services online you can use to scan them. You can do the scanning yourself. That's a whole different class I teach here called organizing your family photos. But let's talk about the big piece of information that is missing uh, from those photos, as I said, the metadata. So even if you loaded those pictures into Google Photo, you scan them, you loaded them into Google Photo, there's no metadata in those photos, so they can't be searched. Because Google, Google doesn't have what's called keyword recognition. What I mean by that is <clears throat> using photo management, a photo management system, and you'll see that in the documentation that Lisa will send to you. There's software that you can, after you digitize your pictures, you can bring the picture in and look at the individual picture. And let's say that this is a no metadata picture. It's a historic picture. What the software does, it allows you to, to add metadata to that picture. You can add things like names, you can add locations, you can add dates. So you can add this metadata right into the digital picture. 
that you've created and save the digital picture. You probably, you might save it in Google Cloud as a backup service, but you probably also would save it somewhere else, maybe your hard drive or an external drive so that the photo management system could look at it and search by metadata because this is the most important sentence I'm gonna tell you today. Google Photo does not have the ability to search on metadata, uh, metadata other than geophysical, geother uh, geolocation, uh, face, date, uh, object. So the, all those historic pictures pre-digital camera all have to be handled differently if you want to save them. Yep. You can. Uh, yeah, well, you can. You can. Uh, you can what's called gang, gang scan them. So you can scan more than one picture at a time to digitize them, and you can also using the photo management system, you can gather all the pictures that have, for instance, Uncle Fred in them and label them at one time. But it's a tedious, long process. You know, it took me three years to digitize a thousand pictures. I did it for two hours every Sunday morning, but it was a labor of love. I captured, my father was the first person in our family, the only person in our family that could afford a camera. So he took all the pictures of the family. So I had all the pictures of the family. And then when I digitized them, put them out on Google Photo, put them out on other drives, I could share them with my cousins and they for the first time had the pictures. But if you're interested in historic pictures and saving historic pictures, you have to really consider the idea of this metadata and categorizing your pictures uh, so that other people can retrieve them in the future and uh, working with a photo management system. I know that's a lot of information, but Google Photo, Google Photo is meant to store photos quickly from your, from your phones and from your PCs that have been digitized. But you have a whole raft of pictures, I'm sure, in your house or on your hard drives that have not been digitized. And for some people, as I said, those are the most important ones. Once those are digitized, you can always use Google Photo to store the information. But uh, let's say that, for instance, when I look at keywords, I'm going, I, I uh, um, lead a digital archiving project at my church in Falmouth. And we're going back to records 150 years old and digitizing the information with scanners. And when we classify that, when we add metadata in keywords, the keyword is just another piece of metadata, just like date, just like exposure of the film, you can actually give an object or a picture as many keywords as you want so that you can find it later on. Uh, because as you can see, the more comprehensive keywords you use, the more sophisticated searching can be done. Yeah. Now, the other thing I do is go on. Yeah. But if I take my Canon uh, camera and I plug it into my laptop, I have to upload the pictures from that. Does that, and then, then I have to have had the Google app and upload them, transfer them to there for them to be digitized? Does that make any sense? Um, well, once they're taken, you're assuming pictures that have been taken on your iPhone, taken I'm by. I'm going to scan this well, car. I'm going to take a trip, plug the camera in, yeah. upload them into a what folder? So what? your your camera is a digital camera. It's a, the it's Canon a, camera is a digital a, camera. Yeah. yeah. So once the digital picture is taken, it automatically is digitized. So you, you're you have a digitized image of that picture. If you took it with your smart, with your phone, you have a digitized image. When you load it into iPhoto, it's a digitized image with metadata in it. 
What about onto the computer? Onto the computer, when you load it on the computer, it's automatically, because it's digitized, it's going to have metadata. Now, you can continue to use iPhoto. iPhoto is a, is a uh, uh, competitor, if you will, to Google Photo. You know, people with, with Apple, you, a lot of them use iPhoto, which is a great product. You just want to compare and make sure that the, the um, capabilities of both are what you want. I think you're going to find with Google Photo, uh, you're going to have more sharing opportunities. And the, ability, the beauty of loading onto Google is that once it's in iPhotos or once it's in Google Photos, any Google product can use those pictures or those documents or those images. It's interchangeable, not only amongst devices, it's also interchangeable among all Google products. And that's the beauty of it. When you load it into iPhoto, it might be a little bit more restrictive to that than that. It says, after I've uploaded my pictures to the cloud, how can I easily delete all pictures on iPhone 6S at once to free up space on my iPhone? Um, first of all, I, I never recommend deleting pictures. Uh, I, uh, it, either digital pictures that are on a device or uh, pictures that are not digitized that are in boxes. Um, even after those bo pictures that are in boxes are digitized, as I mentioned before, they should be kept in a safe, secure location. Digitized pictures should be moved to another device or moved to another backup system and kept. Uh, you know, once you delete a picture, it's deleted whether it's a hard copy picture or a digital picture. You want to be very careful what you delete. I don't recommend deleting any pictures uh, because pictures in today's technology, when compute, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, storage was relatively expensive for computers. But as we've gone on, storage has become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And it costs practically peanuts to store all of these. Don't ever worry about exceeding the storage capability or how much it's going to cost because for the for the priceless benefit of protection it's peanuts and think of those people in florida right now that didn't move a lot of the stuff not only their photos but their important documents uh etc to the cloud in the shape they're in now pray for them all Oh. To ensure. That's a great, uh, that's a great um, question. Uh, I'm going to put on another class. It's called how to take a home inventory using your computer. And all the insurance companies you talk to, they say you should take a home inventory, you should put it on the cloud so it's safe, and then take a backup copy and put it in your safety deposit box. And what I do is I use what's called the the multi-backup system. I'm a fanatic about backup because I've seen, as I said, grown men cry when they lose things um, because they're irreplaceable, especially pictures. Um, so what I do is I, yes, I use Google Cloud as a backup, but I also have a regular uh, cloud file system called Sync, S-Y-N-C dot com. So I've loaded all my pictures into folders on my hard drive. And Sync, what Sync does is it takes a copy of what's on your hard drive and it stores it in the cloud. So I have it on my hard drive and I have it in the cloud. And they're synced together. So when I add a document to my hard drive, it's automatically synced out to the cloud. You'll be covering this in that class. You're yeah, to. yeah. And... I also carry it one step further because as my wife says, you're a little overboard, Paul. I take a I take a copy of my files that contain or my folders that contain the most important information. I copy them on an external hard drive. I put it in my safety deposit box. So I'm pretty much covered. But you can't be too car careful. Believe me. Believe me. Uh, and you know how important 
And your pictures, if you don't do something about your pictures, you just let them sit in boxes that are not acid-free boxes in humid environments, hot environments, cold environments, wet environments, damp environments. Those pictures, especially the pictures that were taken in the 70s, 60s with the Kodachrome process from Kodak, the chemical process is deteriorating right in front of you. I don't know how many people I've talked to and they say, you have a wealth of pictures from my sister. She gave me from the 70s. I want to digitize. She goes into the boxes to get them and they're so faded that no longer can you scan them. They're gone. And once they're gone, that's it. They're gone. Yep. I don't mean to scare anybody or over alarm anybody, but with the disasters we've seen in the last year, it's important that you take what you deem um, irreplaceable and you put it on the cloud or get it somewhere safe. Yeah. Any other questions? Anything at all? Did I cover too much information? Yeah. Uh, so the first thing you want to do if you're interested in Google Cloud is to get on the internet and do some research about Google, Google, um, Google Photo and Google, Google Cloud. Google is called Google Drive. Not called Google Cloud. It's called Google Drive. Um, it's like a hard drive in the cloud. That's all it is. And um, do some research about it. And uh, put it on your desktop. Load it on your desktop and uh, um, research. Add some pictures. Doesn't hurt to add some pictures and fool around with it. Nothing gained, nothing lost. It's free. And uh, start looking at building albums and start looking at uh, your pictures. And take a very hard look at your historic pictures. If you're the type of person that wants to get into archiving historic pictures or old family pictures, remember the second uh, schema I talked about is going to apply to you. You're going to have to get those pictures scanned or do it yourself. And you're going to have to think long and hard about metadata uh, as far as being able to search those pictures. Yeah. Um, someone's asking if you use a flathead scanner or you scan photos. Well, there's a yes. The answer is yes. Um, uh, yeah, the question was, do you, do you use a uh, flatbed scanner to scan photos? Uh, the answer is yes. The technology has changed the last couple of years. You can actually use your an app on your phone to scan pictures uh, if you load that app. And you can use a, uh, a flatbed scanner uh, to scan pictures. But remember, you can use a flatbed scanner or your phone to scan other information that is important to save. And that is you know, your important documents, your photos, uh, your spreadsheets, uh, insurance policies, anything that's deemed important to you, you, you should think very seriously of scanning that information, getting, out, getting it out of your home and into an area that's safe like the cloud. Uh, I, I'm going to be putting on more classes here uh, talking about what documents are important to save, how to save them, and uh, uh, there's a class I'm starting to construct now, and that's uh, uh, using a photo management system, how to use it, what's, what it's going to do for you. And second, another class, secondly, would be uh, taking a home inventory using your computer and uploading that to the cloud so that the contents of your home, including serial numbers, purchase dates, receipts, et cetera, are all in the cloud safe from anything can happen. And if we don't think things can happen, we don't live in Fort Myers. So thank you folks for your time and your, your comments today. I hope you enjoyed it. This is a large topic. I tried to give you as much information as I could in an hour, enough for you to get in there and do your own research and open up your computer and look at Google Photo. Thank you very much. <laughs>